Hello. Yep, I'm back. It happens. Anyway, I actually tried to do this the other day. And then my grandson decided he needed to be part of all the fun. By the time I got finished putting my face on, I had completely lost any train of thought I had when I started. And it went from what usually runs me about an hour when I do the whole face on camera to an hour and 45 minutes of nothing but blathering. I'm going to start off putting on my pineapple coconut prep and prime polishing primer with horsetail plant extract from Style Dry that came in one of the boxes. And I'm trying to use up some of the stuff that came in the boxes. Now, this stuff actually smells pretty good, but it is solidly thick. It don't go anywhere unless you put it. I'm going to get that on because once I get it on it has time to kind of soak in and do its thing. And I've got all the other stuff on the face. You know the serums and the lotions and the potions and the sunscreen and all that silliness. Anyway, yeah, I'm trying to use up some stuff because, let's be real, you can't, even when you stop getting subscription boxes, it takes a while to go through all the stuff that came in before you stopped. Because it, it's like, like I said, this stuff smells wonderful. Pineapple and coconut. Yum. But it does take a while to get through all the stuff. Unless you really hate some of it. And if you really hate some of it, you don't go through it as fast. Well, I'm going, if I really hate it that much, I'm just going to get rid of it. Come here, flat brush. I'm your flat brush. Here, brushy, brushy. There we go. I've got my favoriteest thing, my e.l.f. putty eye primer. Yeah, me and my e.l.f. No, they do not know who I am. More than likely, I do not have enough followers for them to care. I mean, I've got what? Less than 250. And I've been doing this for since August of 18 and I've still got less than 250. I'm not really worried about the numbers. I just have fun doing this. Now, part of the problem in my case with doing this is I'm a whole lot enter more entertaining. Just ask anybody who knows me. I am a whole lot more entertaining when I don't have to watch my language and can just hang out and be me. And me is a bit of a foul mouth. But since my grandkids sometimes watch this and we're trying to curb some of the unfortunate language they've already learned. You know, it's pretty bad when the kid who is not terribly communicative because of his issues turns around and can cuss a blue streak without a breath. Yes, we've had to learn to dial it back just a bit. Because at this point, he is a walking 
random repeat recording device. It's like kind of like a two to three year old with that one. Sometimes a four or five because he runs up and says, Mama, Granny said, <laughs> at which point I get busted. Mama, Grandma said, <laughs> same situation, but it, that's my daughter-in-law's mom, so. <laughs> Daddy, Mama said, <laughs> oops. Anyway, yes, I did the spinner. Bad habit or a bad habit. When they first started, bad habit. Oh, I loved them. There was great debate, though, about, you know, whether or not they were stealing stuff or, you know, it's, it's the great debate of the dupers. Unfortunately for some of us who can't afford the fancy crap and just want, you know, a similar color story to play with, Bad Habit got ran out of town. I'm not even sure which palette the Aura was supposed to be a dupe for, but this is the palette. And it, it's one of my favorites because it's just got neat colors in it. It's like the, the bright neon in the top row. Depending on how you look at it or what other colors you put it with, it could be yellow, it could be green. It's one of my favoritest palettes. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that very well or not. Because it's kind of pale, but there you go. It might be a little better once I get it on the eyes. But this is the one the spinner picked. So I'm going to get started. Now, the other day, when I was attempting to talk to y'all, I was just going on and on and on about some of the stuff that I've been doing with the journals and that kind of stuff that we've been creating. I wanted to do journals that do not look like all the other clip art covered, stock image covered stuff that some people have come out with. So we started doing our own artwork because Mr's good at that. And I had some artwork that I had done prior. I haven't done any of the computer artwork because they changed so much of the program that I haven't done anything new with it. I'd have to learn it all over again. But there was some that was computer artwork, some that was some of my hand-done stuff. You know, I did watercolors and that kind of thing. And we've gotten put together a pretty fair number of pieces in everything from basic blank or lined journals to planners and gratitude journals and prayer journals and little things like that with artwork that doesn't necessarily look like it came straight out of clip art. So we've got those put up. And then we did some stuff that was based in one of our favorite things, which is gaming. And a lot of people who game like to keep track of their stuff. They keep track of the campaign and what their character is doing and that kind of thing. So we did some journals specifically with gamers in mind to, you know, to facilitate that. 
I did some custom interiors for some of those instead of just, you know, like lines. And we know some people who are interested in things like vintage cars and going to the cruises, the um, gatherings for people with vintage cars where they can show off and stuff. So we we actually have a journal now for that specifically. It's got, you know, it's a custom interior that's specifically put together for somebody who enjoys going to the cruises. And it's got information about their vehicle and, you know, up in the front, you've got places where you can put their, you know, your particular vehicle and then there's, okay, the cruise was at, there were these people there that we saw, this was the music, and then you've got a lot of space to write a bunch of other stuff. Did a bucket list. Just because people sometimes need to write down what it is they want to do. Even if they're just being silly. They want to write down some stuff and go, see, I want to get all this done before. And I'm going, yeah, all right. So we created a bucket list. That's another one that's custom interior. And some of the custom artwork on the front. But the main thing was we wanted to be able to go, okay, yeah, there's a bazillion people doing these journals and blank books and stuff. But they all look alike. Now granted, if you're doing a blank journal that's just got blank pages, since the Amazon Kindle thing doesn't allow for blank pages, you either have page numbers or you have border. I mean, that's, you know, there's not a lot you can go with there. It's one or the other. But when it comes to some of the other books, you have a little more leeway. You can do custom interiors to go with your theme. You really can. And it's not that difficult. Some people will try and tell you that it's very hard to do, and it's not. Yes, it saves time if you go and get, you know, somebody else's created interiors for these things. And if it's something like, you know, a basic mileage log or something like that, fine, go ahead and use whatever is already out there as long as they're, they're selling you the license with it. You know, because some of them put up the, you know, free to use and some of them go, you know, you have to keep your receipt so that you've got your license number for using it. And, you know, not a big deal. But if you're going to do something that's specific to what you're trying to do, you're not going to find it necessarily out there in the wild already done. But it doesn't take that much effort to get it put together. If you really want to get it done, it can be did. And that's what we've been doing. We've been putting together things that are different. We didn't want to do the same thing everybody else was doing. There's plenty of blank journals out there. We did a few. 
with some of our original artwork. We did a few. But like the gamer journals and some of the other gamer materials that we did, we've got a couple really nice artwork pieces tucked onto the outside of some of the gaming hex. It's basically map paper for gamers. And we've got some pretty nice artwork on top of basic gaming tracking journals. And then we've got some really nifty artwork that goes along with some gaming journals that bring up some stuff that if you're not a gamer you've probably never even heard of. There is publications of all manner who have done retellings of what is considered urban legend in the gamer world. And some of these stories, some most of them are hilarious, but some of these stories point up that you really have to think about your players in more than one dimension because not everybody not everybody has all the same reference points some people just don't have the reference points one of the ones that we did harkens back to a story that I feel sorry for the poor guy. I really do. Dude goes to visit a local game. Military type guy. There's a lot of military players that show up at, at open local games because you know, they just transferred to the area. They don't know anybody yet, but they want to go game for a while. So they show up at local games and get involved. Now, I'm telling you, again, not everybody has the same cultural references. They just don't. And this one... This story is far enough back that the internet really wasn't. So there's a lot of references that happened in this game that the poor guy who was involved, well, I say guy, I have no idea. The poor person who was involved had no clue what was about to hit right in the middle of his forehead. Just no clue. And you can't really harass him much because when you don't know, you don't know. So this traveling troop that is the player group within the game walks out of a wooded area into a kind of meadow and they are told by the game master, the narrator, storyteller, whatever you want to call them, told by the game master what the environment looks like including the fact that there is a gazebo in this meadow. Now, gazebo, for 
a lot of us, is a pretty common term. Especially if you happen to like to watch home decorating or gardening or anything like that. Well, after the explanation of what was in the meadow, boyfriend goes, K, and proceeds to pick up his bow and arrow and shoot at the busy bow. And then he wants to know what happens. And the GM says nothing. It's a gazebo. And this goes on for several rounds until after our poor child takes out the heaviest weaponry he's got to load into the bow and shoots again and is still wanting to know what happens. And the Game Master, who still has not quite caught on to what the problem is, throws down the dice and said, okay, that's it. You woke him up. It stomps you to death. Everybody take a break. And they all troop out to go do whatever it is they do when they're taking a break. Some of them hit a cigarette, some of them hit the head. A uh, few people hung around just for a few more minutes to talk to our ambitious archer. And one of these people has an accent very similar to our poor confused child. And says unto poor confused child, Why did you shoot up the bandstand? And the boy go, What? Why did you shoot up the bandstand? He said it was a gazebo. Yes, that's a fancy word for bandstand. Bandstand, speaker stand, summer house, screen house. Now, if some of you are from the South, here in the U.S., you may have heard those other references almost as much as somebody from the more metropolitan area would have heard gazebo. Now, think back to the early days of gaming when people didn't really have things like the internet and, and, and the home and garden channel and all that stuff. And they're talking based on their local dialects and local terms. Now what? Poor kid didn't know what a gazebo was. Didn't know had never heard the term. Do not assume that everybody has heard the same words as you have. Just don't go there. It's not worth the hassle. And all you do is confuse people. Anyway, that particular urban legend is now a story in the front of our gaming journal, Urban Legend Edition. We have a couple of them so far. I'm still 
working on more of them and Jim is doing the artwork and in this case the artwork for that one is called You Woke Him Up No, You Woke It Up and it's got a gazebo with tentacles and the blanket chest has got teeth So, yeah. There's your urban legend. Now, there's a couple of the urban legends, one of which I've actually experienced. But see, the thing is, with the urban, the way these become urban legends, is whoever was at the game would have carried that interesting story with them to whatever conventions they went to next. And the story would have spread everywhere. And let me tell you, the people who were spreading the story thought it was the funniest thing they had ever heard but I would really feel sorry for the kid who was on the other side of that story because he'll be hearing about that one mistake for the rest of his tiny life, whether he tells it or not. Definitely dark. Now, I love that neon green or yellow or green yellow or chartreuse or whatever you want to call it, but it's matte, so I'm going to tap little gold here and there. The green that I put here is technically a glitter, but it doesn't seem to want to glitter much. Now I've got to say, I love this palette, but I've had it since I started the channel. So part of the problem may be it's starting to kind of deteriorate. It doesn't smell bad. I didn't see any discoloration and stuff, but you know, sometimes it just is not perfect. And I've got some fallout on the side of my nose, which I'm going to have to get rid of one way or another. Even if it means taking taking something and washing that little area and then putting a little more primer back on. Yeah. This palette may be in for it because I've got I never got fallout from this thing before. I think it may be deteriorating. Oh well. I've gotten some definite use out of it. I've got dents in most every color in here. But, like I said, they do deteriorate. And it's one of the hazards of having this many palettes. You really can't get to all of them in a reasonable amount of time. And, you know, I've been watching some of the other channels where they've been doing massive, massive declutters. And I'm going, you're getting rid of how many pallets? And you've still got how many more pallets? 
when the hell are you going to use them? It's like, come on now. When the hell are you actually going to use these things? Oh, I'll slap a little more primer across that nose there. Now that I've gotten rid of my fallout. At least with the primer, which is a little bit sticky, it didn't floof everywhere. It stayed right there. And I've still got this one problem I end up with, with my eyes, of getting these bits even, because they're not. And you see, I've got a little divot right there. It's only sort of there, but here it's a little deeper because that's where I caught a rock that my sister threw, and I've got a little bone chip missing there, which makes it a little difficult to get precisely the same shapes. Doodly doodly do. So I'm going to fiddle and fart and play I try and get my shapes similar or close enough. And we will go from there. Now, I don't know if you will notice or not in the film, but I'm going to pause you for just a second so that I can deal with unpleasantness that are known as an itchy nose. Be right back. All right, a little better. Now, technically, I've got a mirror right in front of me, right under the camera. But I have to, like, get all the way up on top of it. Which means I'm, like, right up in the camera, which makes it hard for the camera to focus. For me to use it for most of my stuff. So, yeah, I have my little hand camera. Hand camera. Hand mirror. Cotton picking popcorn husk. All right. Now, this is Model Co. Instant Brows Light Medium. This is a piece that came out of one of the boxes. Now, it's got one of those semi-triangular kind of shapes to the head and the point. But I'm never quite sure whether or not I like it. But again, as long as it's a viable product, I'm going to do my best to use it up. Because I hate wasting stuff. I really do. And in some cases, I end up with stuff that's come in the boxes that just, I can't use it. It's the wrong colors. It's like no matter how many times you tell some of them that, you know, dark black is not your eyebrow color, they send you the dark black anyway. And it's like, dude, Give me a break here.
The only time any of my hair has ever been dark black is when I took the dye to it. And it did not look good. Dark black is not my hair color. And it doesn't go well with any of my other coloring for whatever reason. Which I sometimes think is kind of weird. I really do. I sometimes think it's kind of weird. Definitely dark. Dark to the dark dark. Now, I'm going to get something out that I like to play with. I have, on occasion, officially ordered stuff from some things that are a little more expensive than others. And I ordered from Midas Cosmetics. This is their Bitchin' Cake Liner Palette. little drop of water here and there. Little fancy brush. Now these are, act this is actually an artist brush, not a makeup brush. But for that little fine line, yeah. Now the nifty thing about this particular cake liner Things like, this is not brown. It looks brown. It is not brown. It is a deep wine red. I may eventually get some more cake liners that's got different colors and such, but I'm not done playing with this one. Yes, I'm checking what it looks like over here in the monitor. So there. While I was gone, I put the primer back under here and across my nose. I figured you didn't need to see all that. You saw it the first time. Alrighty, let's see what I'm going to do next. Because I'm not going to do the liner yet. Yes, I'm looking for a clean spot on my little my little rag here. And if I can't find one, I have another little rag. But it's still it looks it's still looking a little dark on the skin over here. And again, it's like putting primer back is dead simple. I just want to make sure I got all of the overcast off. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm doing pretty well on lighting today. The mirror on this side over here, yeah, mirror. The window on this side over here has got some pretty decent light coming in. It's kind of nice because we've got one of those frosted films on the window because that window faces right up against the house next to us and right up against our kitchen windows. And this being our bedroom, yeah, I wanted a little more privacy. Okay, let's start doing, what am I doing? I'm going to do the consqueeler. Get my brush out here. I love this brush. Now, I have really thin skin under the eyes, and there are huge veins 
and I've got red all over my nose. It's it's that Western European heritage there. Oh yeah, and that spot. I was getting rid of my little old lady mustache and I nicked the edge of the lip. And then it decided to blow up for me. Just because. And some of this is sun damage. Because I'm old enough that it was one of those things where we really didn't pay tons of attention to things like needing to have sunscreen on all the damn time. Hell, some of us didn't bother to put sunscreen on even if we were going to the beach. Me, I at least did it then because, let's be real, as pale as I am, even though I kind of have a mixed up heritage, as pale as I am, I'm one of them people that you go out in the sun, you burn, you go back in the house, you peel, you start over. I am not one of those people that burns and then goes brown. I burn, I peel, I start over. And it's awful. And it does not make me happy. But it is what it is. But it also goes along with the problem of having a UV reactive autoimmune issue. Which I didn't know about for a very, very long time. And then once I figured it out, I started staying out of the sun a whole lot more. And stopped bitching about putting on sunscreen. Just to go out to check the mail. But then again, I put it on now all the time because I'm sitting in a room with windows. And these aren't even UV protectant windows. These are much older windows. So, yeah, it's, it's become part of the morning routine. You put all the other stuff on, you put the sunscreen on, and then you go about your business even if you're not going out of the house. Okay, that was some CoverGirl, I think. Let me check just to make sure. Yep, Cover CoverGirl True Bit Blend Undercover Concealer. In Fair Porcelain. Now, I have to be careful about, even if it says Fair Porcelain, there are some of them that say fair porcelain, and they're awfully damn pink. I am not the one to wear pink. Wearing pink is definitely not good for me. Now, the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk 510 porcelain is what's going on next. Now, when I first put this out on my hand or on one of the palettes, at first I was a little skeptical because it looked a little pinker than I would have preferred. But it works. So I let it run. This is one of the piece, one of the colors that I pick up, and one of the formulas I pick up, if my local drugstore is out of my favorite Elf, and I've run out of my Elf foundation, 
and the order that I intended to place hasn't been placed yet and it's going to take a while before it gets here. Now I really really like my elf foundation. It makes me very happy. It's a good match. It's a great price point. But this is my the cover girl is my go-to if I am out of my elf. And I think it does pretty good as a match. Which is fun. I like when things match when I want them to. The only thing that I really am not thrilled with on the CoverGirl Skin Milk is this stuff is thin as all hell when you squirt it out of the tube and it tries to run. which is unpleasant. Now, this, the light ivory, this is my, my elf foundation. This stuff does not run. Their serum foundation ver version runs, but I only use the serum foundation when I'm using this which is the Camo CC Cream because I mix the serum foundation with this stuff because this stuff is like forever more thick and I really need to thin it down to get it to, to blend better. So I use the serum foundation with the Camo and if they actually took those two formulas and stuck them together, I would be so happy. No, really. So very happy. Because it's lovely together. And then, if I just powder it down a little bit, I'm not going crazy with the amount of powder. I'm not, if you do, if you notice, I did not get all the way up in here. That crinkly bag does not need any extra drying under there. Because let me tell you that the bag under the eyes, nasty, nasty. I don't need. anything up under the eyes that's going to dry anything down. Yeah. Yes, this is the e.l.f. blotting powder. I like it for setting my face, mainly because I've got better control with this. I like some of the other loose ones, but Especially during the winter, I don't want to get too crazy because, let me tell you, like I said, the last thing I need is any powder up under here during the winter. I actually have some of the eye setting powder right here that during the summer I will put right up under here because I sweat. But, and this stuff is really, really, really pretty. Yes, I'm going to do it anyway, even though it's winter. Because it's got some reflective quality to it that kind of lightens things up a little bit. But, see, without, with. It lightens it up, but it chicken skins it.
And let me tell you, you really don't need a lot of this powder just to brighten it up a little. Which is part of the reason it's in this itty tiny pot. But see, it's, it's chicken skinny. This one's worse. This one's always worse. But you get more of the chicken skin thing going on when you put the powder under. Now, during the summer, I have this lovely stuff. There's zero sweat and sweat block that I use in places where my skin gets way sweaty. I have a tendency to be exceedingly sweaty in spots on my face. Part of it is the fibro and part of it is just being me. But I sweat so much that literally, even, even though I'm not doing anything, all I have to do is sit in warm temperatures and my face starts to run like I've got a hose hanging over my head. And it just runs and it runs into my eyes and it runs down my face and it just... I look like I'm getting ready to pass out. I have had people come up to me while I'm sitting doing nothing and go, are you okay? And it's like, so I use the sweat control stuff. It's not perfect, but it does help. Thank you for that tip, Angie at 4F Beauty. Yes. The other thing that I like about using the blotting powder, just putting it where I want it, I usually do not have an overabundance of powder that I then have to brush away, even though I do this anyway. It just kind of evens out where everything's sitting. I love my brushes. Yes, my nose itches. I'm sorry. Now, I'm going to another Got It in a Box product. I cannot remember the name of this one. This is a Pacifica Duo. I've got two of them. One of them is definitely, definitely the summer colors. I mean, yeah. Desert Sunset, that's summer colors. This one being paler, I, but I can't remember, the little, they put a little sticker on the back, on top of a little mirror that's on the back. And it fell off, so. I tend not to use a lot of bronzer during the cold weather. Just kind of pretend I'm putting it on. One thing, I still don't have car. So I don't go out anymore. Well, when I have to go to the doctor's office, there's a local taxi service that'll take you to your doctor's office for free. And then, but we still don't have a car, so we're not going out, even to the grocery store. Our little bitty town, last year, early last year, started a delivery service. They had been working on it for a while. But they kind of ramped up getting it going when we hit COVID lockdowns. So.
you know, it, 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 the COVID lockdown was a bad thing. However, I am grateful that the COVID lockdown got us our um, delivery stuff. Because it means that I am not up the creek. Where did that other brush go? It is skipped. Never mind. I got this one. It is skipped. Yeah, I've got a brush that's got. It's one of the duo fiber stipplers. There it is. That I often use on the blushes just because. It's got a wide coverage, but it doesn't pick up a lot because it's so such a choppy choppy fiber layout and like I said this is one of my favorites for the dim weather Speaking of dim weather, I'm already starting to lose my light over here a little bit. A little colored rain. I love this. This one is wonderful. No flash needed. right across the top there. This one's kind of a green and gold. I love this thing. It's one of the first colored rain pieces I'd ever gotten. And it came through a box and I was a happy camper. I love it. We're getting there. A little at a time. Okay, now that I've got the foundation and stuff on, let's see. What am I do? What am I gonna do? Take my little pencil brush here. Pick up some of that colored rain. and get down here in this corner don't want to get way bright with it but hey I wanted to get way, way bright with it. I've got some liquid 
shadow that's in a bright white. And we could get right up in the break with it. At some point, I want to try to get a different camera. At some point. It's going to be a while. But the one that I've currently got, which does pretty good pictures, is a webcam. And it doesn't have zoom capability. So I can't just grab it. And go G -g 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 -g, and zoom in on the eyes so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing. It just don't work that way. Pull my trash can to me so I can do this. Yeah, if you haven't used your eye pencils in a bit. Or your lip liner in a bit and you don't like the idea that the point or the surface is going to be scratchy because you haven't touched them in a while use the sharpener just run it through the sharpener briefly Besides, especially with eye pencils, if you've been rubbing them on your eye, they're going to pick up stuff. And when they pick up stuff, that's an excuse for germs of whatever nature to attach themselves to the biomaterial that has been deposited on the surface. And if you sharpen your pencil, you take that layer of biomaterial and whatever it's collected off pencil. Which may not be the perfect way to avoid eye complications or something like that, but it's a better way to go. If it reduces the risk, I'm going there. Real simple. If it reduces my risk, that's where I'm going. That was just a little bit of dark green along the bottom water line. I've got my, believe it or not, this is a Maybelline product. Master Precise skinny. I mean, look at that. And this is a retractable. But I like using it for doing the upper lines. Because A, it works really nicely, and B, I spend less time poking myself in the eye with it. Because it's such a small point. I don't know why I can do the bottom lashes, the bottom line, without poking myself in the eye too much, but not so much with the top line. Now, let's see. Open this back up and decide if I'm going to use the dark green up here or if I'm going to use that one there. This one is very bright. This one is pretty mel pretty mellow. I think I'll go mellow. Now this little dropper bottle has got just a little got water with just a couple of drops of glycerin. Now 
and I put a drop on the little cake. And then I grab my teeny tiny number one brush and just kind of dab it into the liquid and pull it across the cake just a little bit. Now, cake eyeliners do not work under the same rules as pressed pigments. Cake eyeliners are intended to get wet with tiny amounts of water so that you can pick up the color to put on your eyes. Pressed pigments are not formulated for getting wet. Do not turn around and look at somebody and tell them you can do that, that you can get your pressed pigments wet just because you saw somebody take a cake liner and put a drop of water on it. No, <coughs> that is not how this works. Now, do not expect me to do a perfect cat's eye. Remember, my eyes fold a lot. They fold a lot. A lot, a lot. I know, I'm supposed to be practicing with my left hand. However, my left hand has decided to be shakier than usual. So, this will be one of those get over it days. One of those days where I look at you and go, you get what you get, that's it. enough. It'll do. Okay. Now I'm gonna... There we go. Believe it or not, this is great. See this? This is great. Don't argue. It's great. The blue one is definitely a different shade. See? Great. Green, 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 green. Not a lot of green went on with that there. Let's try it that way. Green. Anyway, AOA Studios for a dollar has several different colors in mascara. And I find them 
very nice. It's like, okay, yeah, it's not like something magnificent, bad girl bang, or, or you know, one of the L'Oreal's or something like that. But it works. And if you really want it to be out of this world, take a different mascara, build up your lashes, put the color on as your last coat. I currently own the green and a blue and a brown. Do you know how hard it is to find brown mascara? My eyelashes, the few I have, are not black. I was born a towhead. I don't know what that means. It means completely white-haired. Just like both of my parents were. My daddy's hair was coal black as a younger man, even though he started out white-haired. Then he went back to white-haired. My mama's hair went mud brown. Now, I went through several shades of blonde over the years until I got to somewhere between mud brown and dirty dishwater. At which point I decided I would color my hair to suit myself. I spent a lot of time being a redhead. And I didn't worry too much being a redhead because my eyelashes and my eyebrows were a reddy, brown, goldy kind of mix. So, you know, it was already mostly okay. Most people could not tell that I was not a natural redhead except when I went really, really out in left field with the red dye and went a bit nuts. Yeah, a bit nuts. And did some like really interesting shades like this one that's called raspberry twist now of course this one has been washing out for a while fantasy colors really are not meant, not meant to stay put forever they just aren't i put this one in just before christmas and it's been rinsing down as we go i will probably refresh it at some point now I'll mix a little bit of the color in with some conditioner and go Fuji, Fuji, Fuji. Got a little mascara under the eye here. Oh well, could be worse. Now let's see, what am I going to do for my rotten mouth? No idea. Let's see, we'll start with a liner. This one's called Ginger. Vivid Lips Lip Liner by Amuse. It's called Ginger. It's better known as Brown. Mm -hmm. 
ready to drop the potty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are you going, buddy? Yeah, that bit. Come on, Rob. Now, what am I going to fill it in with? I could get really, really just obnoxious. I mean, I've got two different greens. No, three different greens, actually. These are the Nikkei bullets. And then I've got this one that's called Nice Face. It's a liquid. I mean, I could just go green. I could go more brown. If I got crazy, I could go blue. I could go gold. What am I going to do? I think I'm going to go gold. Just for the heck of it. Yes, it's a brown lip liner. It don't matter. This is a clean color in their Femme line lipstick. And it's called Oro. Gold, gold, gold. If you're going to go bold, might as well go bold. Hey, Meester. So far, the old man likes it. Always handy when the old man likes it. Now, y'all tell me what you think. Should I hang on to the Aura palette for a little longer, even though it's maybe starting to deteriorate, or is it time to let it go? No, I'm not going to sing that damn song. I'm tired of that song. Mind your manners. Keep your distance. Wear your mask if you're still under mask restrictions. Get your vaccination. Don't argue with me about it. Okay? Okay. Stay out of trouble. I do not have bail money for any of a lot of you. I just don't. There is no bail money. I couldn't bail myself out. I, I. Be good. <laughs>